creating a timer or a countdown clock, any kind of digital clock in DaVinci Resolve is not that difficult. The process to add the time code is very quick. However, when you get a little bit more complicated and fancy as you're seeing on screen now, things get a little murky. So welcome back to Creator Reality. Today, we're gonna take a look at DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna show you how to add a time code to a text plus node, and then we're gonna get a little bit fancy with it, including the sound effect that maybe you hear over this. Anyway, let's dive into DaVinci Resolve and show you what we're working with. I have one clip on my timeline, and I'm gonna use that to highlight an issue later on but I wanna add a digital clock display over this random footage of me riding a motorcycle. So we're gonna start by going to Effects, Titles, and we're gonna grab Text Plus here. We're gonna grab it and drag our Text Plus on top of our clip, drag it out to be the same length, click on it to make it selected. See, we've got the red outline, and then it's got custom title here in the text. We can select it, backspace to get rid of it, and we're gonna right click and click on Time Code and you'll see it had some random numbers. It's gonna run through. That's DaVinci Resolve doing the render cache here. Yep, it by default, it's gonna render this out into the render cache. And that's fine. It's all well and good. It doesn't look right, but don't worry. First thing we need to do is select our font, and I downloaded a digital font, like a clock font, and we're gonna select digital seven italic. That's fine. We want the size to be a little bit bigger, so we're gonna grab our size and slide it up. I think we want it about that big. This is a demo and I want you to be able to see it. Now that that's rendered out, we're gonna screw it up again. To change this, there's no easy way in here to change the time. So we're gonna click on our Fusion icon and this is gonna open up our Text Plus in Fusion. So now we have a start offset and frames per second. The frames per second is populated from our timeline, and we have hours, minutes, seconds, frames, and fields. Fields we don't need, frames we don't need, we want hours, minutes, and seconds. Here's where things get tricky. You can just drag this and slide it over, or you can enter a random number, and if that lines up with how many seconds you want, or if I double that, a minute 40, that's fine. That's all well and good. But if you wanna set a specific time, I'm gonna show you the really easy, fast way to do that. It involves a little bit of typing. I will have it blown up text on screen when I type it in. So we're going to right click on start offset and we're gonna click expression. And that brings us this window here and we can double click to select all backspace. And then you see the plus icon. We're gonna click and drag to frames per second and that will connect it. So we're already at 001, okay, that's fine. But we're gonna add in some text here. So we're gonna press home, add a left parenthesis at the start, press end, add in times 60, times 60, times the number of hours that you want. So in this case, I want four o'clock in the afternoon. So that's 1600 hours, right? Military time, 24 hour time. And then we're gonna do a right parenthesis plus left parenthesis. We can click on our plus, drag it to frames per second again. It adds frames per second back in, times 60 again, times, let's say we want it to be 423 in the afternoon. And then a right parenthesis and press enter. And now you see we have 162300. Now, when we come back to the edit page, it's gonna play up our time and it's gonna do our render for us. And you'll see it's only doing the hours, minutes, and seconds. So now that that's done, if we play this back, we have a countdown timer or digital clock rather. That's pretty cool, right? And we can change things from here if we need to, but I think we're gonna leave it as, as is. What we really wanna do is make it look more like a digital clock. So if you wanted to give it a glow, you'd come up to your effects tab here and you'd go under filters and you'd click the magnifying glass, type in glow, and then drag it on. <sighs> this is the problem I ran into and we are gonna have a solution. I highly recommend that before you do the glow node, we go in and set up the digital clock exactly how you want it to appear on screen. In this case, 
center is fine, but you may want to move it around or tweak some of the other settings. Do all that before you go in and add the glow, okay? So let's go in and delete our glow effect, and we're going to hold Alt and drag up to create a duplicate. See that? Well, now we have two of them. So we're going to click on the bottom one, and we're going to drag glow onto that. Don't worry. We're going to fix that in just a second. So now glow is selected. If it's not, if you're in the video tab, click on effects. And if you don't see anything here, click in the text or the open space to open it up. Now we're going to select a color. We want red, bright red. That's fine. And now it's going to glow red. Nothing's happened. Don't worry. What we need to do is bring up our gain a little bit. You can see the glowing red is right there. And then we can bring up our opacity if you like, but we're going to double click to reset that. And we need to go all the way to the top and glowing image. We want glow alone. Not bad at all, right? Except we still don't see the footage. If I click around, all you see is the digital clock and it looks pretty good, right? And then we're going to go to settings and we're going to scroll down to composite and we can do add or we can select any of these other options. Screen usually looks pretty good. There you go, there's screen. You could have a multiply or an overlay. Oh, that sky looks good. Anyway, we're gonna choose screen for this one. And now we've got a glow around our digital letters. Isn't that, or digital numbers, isn't that neat? That looks pretty cool, right? Let's say we wanted to do a countdown timer. That's pretty easy too. Let's get back into Resolve. So we're going to delete our bottom one because we're going to have to recreate it anyway. And we're going to click on our original. We're going to click on our fusion button. And now that we're in the fusion page, if you've been following the channel, you know what I'm about to do. I'm going to click on template, press shift space bar, type in time, and there's time speed right there. We're going to click add, and we're going to double click on the speed and say minus one. And now when we come back and we let this render out, it's going to count down to the time that we entered to start with. So now the starting time has become the end time. Is that backwards? Is the start time now the end time? I don't know. Leave me a comment below. Are you enjoying this? Are you learning anything? This, I, I've used this effect a number of times, but I've never done a video on how to do it. And I have recently discovered this expression thing and I'm absolutely loving it, having a blast with it. So yeah, this is pretty cool. Now that it's rendered out, we can play it back and it's counting down. How cool is that? And again, we can make a duplicate, drag on our glow, change it to glow alone, change the color. This time we want blue. And then we can come back to the video, click settings, come down to composite, change it to screen. And now we have a glowing blue clock on here. We'll let that render out and then we'll play it back. And now you've got the blowing glue clock counting down. And it keeps the render cache, which is really, really kind of important for smooth playback. Pretty cool, right? Hey, now let's take it and save it for other projects. So if you enjoyed my Power Bins tutorial, you'll know that I have a demo folder that I put stuff into. I'm going to drag both of these guys right up in here and it's going to add them. Now, a lot of the text plus stuff, because if I click on here and click file, I could have changed it here, but I forgot to. But something like a text node, a regular text node, doesn't let you change the file, uh, file name, whatever they call it. So in our power bin, we can click on it and then click again with a little bit of a pause, not a double click. And then we can type in countdown timer. And then we can click on the other one and say countdown timer glow. So now if I click on countdown timer, I can drag it in and I can drag the glow underneath of it. And then there's our clock and it's counting down. Now we've got our time code clock set up. We want to add that neat dink, 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 dink to it. So let's jump back into resolve and we'll add the sound design. So for this, we're going to start at the start of our clip and we're going to alt mouse wheel to zoom in because this sound effect is very short. I went and found this online. It was free, you know, copyright free and all that. And we're going to just drag one into the start of our clip. Then we press shift right to go one second forward. We'll hold alt, click and drag our sound effect over. And now 
we have two of them. So if we play this back, there, we got two of them. So we want to change the first one or the second one. Either way, it doesn't really matter. If you don't like it, you can flip it. We're going to come in here to the audio because audio, when you click on video, you get the video tab. When you click on an audio clip, you get the audio tab here. And then we're going to just scroll down and you see pitch, semitones, and sense. Now, sense is a small, a very minor correction, but the semitones is a major correction, and that's what we want to do. Just kind of a gross, quick correction here. You can either click and drag on the dot, or you can double click and enter a number, or you can even, if, you're, if it's not selected, you can even kind of go back and forth and just drag it when you see the left right arrow. But we want five on this one. And now, let's bring this up a little bit. We can select both of these, go to the start of the second one, press shift right again, hold alt, and with both audio clips selected, then we have all four of these, right? So then we'll zoom out, go shift right, and then make sure all four are selected, alt, duplicate, you know? Now we've got one every second, and we've got a few more seconds to go, so we'll click on the start of the last one, shift right, and then we'll bring four new ones over. We've got two extras. We can just backspace to get rid of those with them selected. Now when we play it back, it's going to look and sound like this. Not too shabby, right? That's pretty easy really nice effect at the end of the day, and you avoid that pitfall of the glow kind of crushing everything. And if you want to get really fancy and you want to have the text plus speed either forward or reverse from the edit page, you're going to want to check out this video here, and I hope you're having a great day. Yeah, that video there, it's going to show you how to add the switch node to your fusion composition and then publish that to the edit page. Yeah, I did that. I hope you're having a great day. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. See you all in the next one.